Well, thanks again for tuning in to another session of Talks and Chats. And uh, as I always say, please, please share this on YouTube, share it on Instagram, share it on Facebook. Let someone know uh, that we're here and that Zion Global Ministries, we're trying to minister to the whole person. So that's what this session is really all about. And to my right today, we're going to have a chat with my oldest daughter, uh, Jasmine Hudson. And um, I'm thankful she happened to be in town. So I said, why not? Let's take this time and share. Uh, there's a lot going on right now and uh, we're not gonna take up all of your time, but Zion, I think these, these sessions that we have is just a time of uh, connecting in with the body of Christ, no matter whether you're a member here at Zion or not, you're a part of the body of Christ and God is doing some special work with all of us. So this is a time we get a chance to share a little bit. So praise God. Jasmine, welcome. Thanks. Thank, thank you for Dad. <laughs> thank you for being here tonight and thank you for sharing with us. We're just blessed to have you. Um, Everybody doesn't know you. There's a lot of people that know you, but everybody doesn't know you. The OGs so. know me. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah. All right. So if you just give us a little tidbit about you, where you are, where do you live, kind of what are you doing these days? Sure. And then we'll go backwards. All right. <laughs> I am Jasmine Hudson. This is my dad. Um, uh, da -da -da. So I currently live in Arkansas, Bentonville, Arkansas. I am a full-time entrepreneur as of two weeks ago. So woo, woo. Yeah. Um, so my business is Black Paper Party. Look it up, blackpaperparty.com. And on all of your social media, we do gift wrap, uh, gift bags, ornaments, and all of that. So we are gifting solutions for the culture. Um, and I do that as well as I run an organization in uh, Northwest Arkansas. Abbreviation is NWA. So um, it's the organization is called Black Owned NWA, where we promote things to do, place to go, uh, specifically for the black diaspora in the area because black people we're only 2.8% of the population. So we're on, uh, our mission is to change that trajectory and increase the population of the, the region. So that wow. is part of who I am and what I do. I'm also a sister, an auntie, a daughter, all, all the things, best friend, so yeah. 2.8, yeah, so you mentioned 2.8, that just kind of messed with me a little bit because uh -huh. you're saying 2.8% of the population of Northwest Arkansas or yeah. Bentonville? All of Northwest Arkansas. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, so, all righty, so 2.8% of the entire population yeah. Of Arkansas, no, Northwest, Northwest Arkansas, Arkansas, the region, is, Northwest Arkansas region, is yeah. uh, people of color, black, black specifically, black. not people of color. People okay. of color is a whole different okay. situation. Yeah, got it, got it. So, did you guys know that before you kind of went into this this one business that you're dealing with? Is this black-owned NWA, black-owned, meaning these are literally black-owned bl businesses? Black-owned businesses. Yeah. Okay, Northwest Arkansas. No. Okay. So the way Black Owned NWA came about was my best friend um, and I. So shout out to Jay. Hey, Jay. Hopefully you're watching this. Huh? <laughs> so um, essentially, we had another Instagram page, Jazzy J and WA. So it's like the chronicles of two black millennial women exploring Northwest Arkansas, right? Um, what happened was we started getting a lot of inquiries just from friends and followers and all of that on, um, hey, well, where do you guys get your hair done? Uh, places of worship, black doctors, things like that. And we're just like, you know what? You know, it's a, it's a lot to be hitting up everyone kind of individually. Let's go ahead and just create um, an account where we're, you know, it's essentially a directory, but it's like an Instagram directory. Got it. Um, and that's what uh, started started the whole thing and we just have a whole bunch of highlights. If you come into town and you're looking for a black church, you're looking for black doctors, you're looking for a place to get your hair cut, you go to Black Owned NWA. Um, so for a while we were just kind of trucking along, really just uh, pushing it out for those uh, who thought the resource was helpful. And then when George Floyd, the situation happened, um, our followership exponentially grew yeah. um, because people were trying to figure out ways to plug in and help out the black community in Northwest Arkansas, which is really interesting, and we can talk, you know, in a whole mm. another 30 minutes about that. <laughs> um, but 
the again the the account grew from like 2000 now we have about 12,000 uh, followers so now we're doing events we're hosting uh, events we're plugging in with uh, diversity equity and inclusion strategies for like the Walmarts and the Tysons and the JB Hunts. so it's really interesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when you left Cincinnati um, you know I'm I would have to say maybe you did not know that all of this was ahead of you no not at all uh, okay <laughs> so we we left you left uh -huh. in 2008. Yes. After graduating from Winton Woods. Go Warriors. Okay. And then you went to Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. Go right? Tigers. All right. And from Tennessee State to Northwest Arkansas. Northwest Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you've been down there since you graduated from Tennessee State. Yes. Okay. So when was that? 2013. All right. Now, just as a part of your path, have you been anywhere other than Northwest Arkansas since you left Nashville, Tennessee? Have you no, lived, not to live. lived anywhere else? Not since I left Nashville. While in Nashville, I did like internships where I stayed like in Lexington, Kentucky for three months and St. Louis for six months, but I've never lived anywhere else hmm. but Northwest Arkansas outside of uh, graduating school. So sometimes, guys, just so you know, um, we speak in Disney and or we, we speak in animation and uh, if you ever hear me if those of you that know me say these things it starts with my children okay yeah. um for disney kids but i would say that she may have forgotten it may be a dory moment um, when um, she lived in new jersey oh i forgot about See, <laughs> i so, did you know this is true <laughs> it was so short Hey, it yeah. It's okay. I didn't journey. even I didn't even count it as like taking up true residence, but I guess I did because I show paid taxes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Who? Uh -huh. So Jersey taxes. Yeah. We need a whole another thirty minutes about Jersey taxes. <laughs> what you doing, Jersey? It's ridiculous. Anyway. So so the reason why I bring it up because as a part of your journey, you know, there was this this interim, this pause, or yeah. this this segue, or this other place yeah. of living that happened right before the pandemic. It was in the pandemic, the thick of it. So January 2020 is when I moved to Jersey. Got that it. is the height, like like a little bit before, but then it ballooned up. Um, so it was already um, lockdowns and curfews and masks and uh, all mm. of that. Nobody told me that you couldn't have uh, plastic bags when you go to Walmart, you have to buy the bags. So that's a whole nother situation, mm. but yeah, like, very you know, interesting. What is interesting to me is, as Pastor, Pastor Pyphus has been going through this series on my yes mm -hmm. to his call, okay? Your yes part of, mm -hmm. your yes was to go to New Jersey. You agreed to go to New Jersey. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then okay. you were not there very long. Correct. Then you left Northwest Arkansas went to New Jersey and then what? Came back. Okay, so <laughs> essentially like saying yes and like flowing with whatever gets kind of put in front of you. Um, the whole going to Jersey part was, um, some people would say very happenstance. I was so sick of my other role, I was ready to get out. So I was interviewing inside the company, outside of the company. And then I ran into a lady, I was helping her get into the building because she was from another campus. She couldn't get into the building. I was nice to her and she was just like, you know, what do you do? Who are you? Of course, I'm just like, I am Jasmine Hudson. So um, after that, had like a quick interview with her because she realized the role that I was in was uh, specifically the skill set she was looking for for this new role in Jersey. Mm. So me kind of meeting her outside of the building, her trying to get in, sparked that entire opportunity, moved out to Jersey. And then um, essentially while I was out there, the campus closed. Um, Walmart wanted to bring all of the uh, associates to the home office, uh, which is in Bentonville, Arkansas. And I was just like, I didn't really move into Jersey because like pandemic Jersey is not the regular Jersey and I was ready to get out of there. So essentially when they shut it down, they were just like, hey, are you willing to move back to Northwest Arkansas? I'm like, you know what? I didn't even unpack, go ahead and take me back. Um, so I think it was really a big setup for the next uh, phase of my life because um, when it was time to find a place to live, um, we have some friends 
in Northwest Arkansas, Dave and Jenny Mars, who have a show on HGTV. Um, we didn't want to be on like the show. We called them because we're just like, we know y'all know houses, right? So help us find a house in Northwest Arkansas, my best friend and I. Um, so they were just like, yeah, absolutely. Actually, we have a place. We've been meaning to renovate it. Would you guys mind being on the show? And I'm just like, of course, like <laughs> absolutely. That wasn't where I was trying to go with yeah. it, but since you asked, yes, I'll be on HGTV. So that's kind of how the, ended up in Jersey, ended up back in Northwest Arkansas, ended up on TV, which catapulted more things and opportunities uh, once I re returned. Mm, interesting. Mm -hmm. So Northwest Arkansas has now been your home for, I don't know. I would really say since, 13, because that stint in yeah, yeah. Uh, Jersey was like seven months. Got it, got yeah. it, got it. So I know that I raised you in the church. Yep. So there is familiarity, not only with a building, but with the Lord. Absolutely. Amen. Um, mm -hmm. So take us through some of those touch points, maybe where you heard the Lord say, you know what? I want you to go this way. I want you to do this. Mm. Maybe even think, before you started the business. I mean, you got a business going now, right? A yeah. pretty decent business? No, I think really when I've heard him the loudest was, I guess it's probably, I don't even know if it's necessarily the loudest, but it's the most recent, hmm. um, was the decision to leave my yeah. job, okay. right? We'll so yeah. leaving um, like a really decent, you know, position, salary, in the middle of a recession, gas is, mm -hmm. prices are on the rise. You know what I mean? Um, it was a very interesting decision and it was something that I was contemplating for a really long time. And um, what I would say is there were just several different like inflection points mm -hmm. uh, that showed me like it's time to go. Um, so be it a sermon that I listen to where it's just like, hey, it's time to move on to mm -hmm. your next, you know, season. Um, I listen to a lot of motivational messages and all of that. Um, and then let me tell you something. I don't, I don't know if mm -hmm. God was speaking through Beyonce, but Beyonce came out <laughs> with Break My Soul. She said, I fell in love and I quit my job. I said, that did it. I'm out. But no, <laughs> there were several, there were several uh, different points, uh, specifically work situations where I'm just like, you know what? I don't have to be here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a thriving uh, outside of work, you know, nine to five work business. I can go. And then there were a lot of situations that happened for the business, actual Black Paper Party, um, that was just like, it's time for you to time for you to bounce. So specifically, our business um, won a pitch competition mm -hmm. at Macy's and um, won about $100,000. And that is exactly what we needed because we, we sat and strategized what is needed for us to be full time. Mm -hmm. And we said $100,000 and then we won it. No debt, no equity attached to it. That. It's just cash, mm -hmm. right? Um, so when we got that award, I was just like, now I'm a bounce. No. Um, mm -hmm. So different sermons, different people speaking into my life, including you um, and the family. Beyonce's Break My Soul, shout out B. <laughs> and then <laughs> just um, God positioning it, uh, me in a place to have the provision needed to just bounce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the timing piece. The timing was critical. The timing was really, really critical. Absolutely. And, and there's some things, there's some entrepreneurs that are tuned in. Um, there are so many people who are really thinking about what they're going to do, you know, kind of that next, you mm -hmm. know, and sometimes the next is laid out for you. It's just, I mean, just as plain as it wants to be. And then other times it's not plain at all. Mm -hmm. You know, there are things, you know, our faith walk is being able to understand the substance of things hoped for, mm -hmm. but it's the evidence of things not yet seen. So when you don't see something, but mm -hmm. you're moving in the direction of what is or what's to come, yep. that's a different place to be of understanding um, the things that you don't see, you know? So right now you have moved into an arena of what you don't see. Correct. You know, um, but you already have some evidence yeah. because you have some experiences that you've already gone through. So I kind of wonder if you think about, you know, this walk Mm -hmm. This walk into this business that you moved into, this walk into the not having a job place. Um, I think this I is am your, gainfully th employed. This is a first time, mm -hmm. I mean, since you moved to Northwest Arkansas, that yeah. you have not had a physical 
corporate job. True. Right? Uh huh. And you are how old? How old am I? Lord Jesus. 20, uh, Let's see, look at 32. It. There you go. Okay. Ooh, we. So at 32 years Ooh. old, right? Uh -huh. You are experiencing this walk, a new walk. Uh huh. Right? Yes. Okay. There is a there's a point in the scripture in Isaiah six when uh, when when Isaiah is he's he's speaking about his experience uh -huh. that happened when his when the king Isaiah passed away, mm -hmm. and it says in the year the king Isaiah died I saw also the Lord high and lifted up his train filled the temple and there's some um, elements there mm -hmm. that it'd be great to read about. The thing that happened was he saw the Lord in a whole different way in that year that something passed away. Okay. See, right now I'm thinking about this job that you had. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously you were at a place of I'm a little frustrated. Yeah, I want to do something different. Yeah. I think I'm going to move beyond this. But now it has happened. Mm -hmm. So in the year that I left mm -hmm. <laughs> my position, full-time position, I am now seeing something totally different. Yes. You know, how does that feel so far? I know it's not been long, but how is that? Um, so I'm going to package it in almost like advice to yes, new good. entrepreneurs or those That's who good. are seeking to be entrepreneur uh, and entrepreneur. Um, it requires a level of discipline that you've probably never had to really tap into because being in a corporate, uh, in the corporate arena, you're accountable to other people, right? So when you're accountable to other people, yeah, you're going to be at work at 7.30 or 8.30. You're going to work until about 5.30. Um, and you're going to, uh, make sure your work is conducive to the KPIs that you have to hit. Um, entrepreneurship, you have to set your own KPIs, right? Um, and then what I also like to work through is it's called OKRs, Objective and Key, uh, key Results. So essentially you write down your mission mm -hmm. of your business, um, kind of the inputs required to make substantial change, and then the actions that you're going to put in place to essentially hit that. But in order to hit it, right, um, you have to manage your own time. Mm -hmm. And you have to be uh, disciplined in the way that, okay, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to, uh, I like to, it's a book, um, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, The Sabers. So silence, affirmation, visualization, exercise, read, and scribe. So if you can hit, I would say at least three of those in the morning, you've poured into yourself first, mm -hmm. um, which is crucially important. And then prayer, you know what I mean? He, it, was, it was a different book, so it wasn't like pray first. But okay, pray first, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you wake up. You hit your, your, your morning where you're pouring into yourself and then you uh, kind of chunk out your day in a way that when you go to bed that night, you've accomplished something that's going to move your business forward. Um, so there's, a, there's just a discipline that needs to be employed that I'm still trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you're just going to sit there, one, being newly freed from like, your job. You're just kind of like, I'm exhausted. I didn't even realize I was operating on that crazy of a level hmm. to where, so first, I really need to take time and just like chill right. for a second. And that's where you're talking about the power of the pause, right? Mm -hmm. I just really want to chill real quick. I need to recalibrate. You need to understand who you are at your core. Mm -hmm. And then what is your mission? Well, if your mission is your, like, you know what I mean? The impact that you're going to make through your business. Now I need to structure my day that way. And then what comes from discipline is also consistency and those kind of uh, incremental gains that you have every single day that uh, amount to something really big. Mm -hmm. So it's discipline first. So um, what is it? I, I try to say that um, discipline is going to unlock my next level. Mm, so I have right, to right. I have yeah. to align myself with that that frequency that I need to operate in so I can kind of go forward. So it's like the EAC on Nemo. Okay, so for those who don't know, first of all, if you've never seen Nemo, you shame, shame, it. I know your name. You need to watch it. And then there's this uh, East Australian current and what's it called? What's Nemo's dad, Dory, they're going all along and they need to go to, um, 
Sydney. That's right. <laughs> Sydney. Uh, Australia. And then the only way to get there is the East Australian Current. There is a literally a current that is going through the ocean that is faster than anything around it. And the only way to get to where you need to get to is to tap into it. And get in. So that's what I'm saying. So it's frequency, it's current. It's an energy that you have to tap into that God is calling you to be a part of. And if you don't tap in, you're just going to be floating. We don't need to just keep swimming. We need to just get on in there and just let the current ride let us through. Let it move you. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, see, now that, see, you know, if I could have summarized <laughs> any better, I'm glad you tapped into <laughs> your, your inner Disney. I'm you telling know, you, Disney come, will do it for you. It'll come with it. But it, it I mean, it's you. real. Uh -huh. It's really real. Did I lie? Because it actually no. pro it propelled mm -hmm. them to their necks. Literally. At a speed that they couldn't even have understood. And you're actually mm -hmm. in that place. They were floating with turtles, which is yeah, interesting because right. a turtle is normally slow. That's why so they have you, to take it. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so, so congregation, Zion, family, friends, there are so many things that God is doing right now. It is actually blowing my mind at this moment, in this hour, in this season, you can tap in, mm -hmm. <laughs> not just to the East or the Eastern East Australia, Australia current, <laughs> you can tap into what God is doing mm -hmm. and he will propel you because the reason why he does this thing, because he restores and he builds and he puts you back into a place. Sometimes we get off path, right? Mm -hmm. We get off task and you Out think we've, we've lost time yeah. and things of that nature. You went to New Jersey, you're like, oh God, why did I do that? Bad decision. Maybe not. No. Nope. Because you went there and things happened there that got you back, but it propelled you to a next. Mm -hmm. Even in that short period of time, you were propelled immediately to a next, even another level. You even got a promotion, like two promotions True. in six months. I mean, who does that? Jasmine. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, God, not me. So, so it wasn't me. <laughs> these are the things. These are the things that happen. You know, I think God allows us to say, well, you know, if you take your hands off uh -huh. long enough and let me do some things in your life, then you'll step into where I actually want you to be. It's mm -hmm. a part of purpose. It's a purpose-driven life, mm -hmm. and our it's our faith book. walk, literally, our faith walk is to move in a place of what we don't see to tap into that unseen realm that you can t go to your next in your life. So we're going to bless God for the short time we had. I thank God. Maybe another opportunity we'll get a chance to share. But the Lord has spoken, I believe, tonight. So I bless him right now. And I thank you for tuning in again to Talks and Chats. Hey, Zion Peace. Global Shalom. Ministries Way. Yeah. Hey, get it. Zion Global <laughs> Ministries Way. Yeah. All right. Okay, sorry. All right. Shalom. See you. <laughs>